At some point in every pilot's life, they will run out of fuel in flight. It's not a matter of if, but when. He doesn't know it yet, but for this pilot, today is the day. Sometimes when an aircraft no longer has fuel, the engine quits producing what's known as power. And once that happens, it pretty much all just goes straight to hell. There's nothing you can do about it. This was a completely typical flight. Um, I did my normal pre-flight routine. Uh, I sumped the tanks. Sumping the tanks is something you do before you fly to make sure that there's no water in your fuel. Because if you get water in the gas tanks, it can be catastrophic. Oh, that's odd. Nothing came out of that side. Well, you know what they say. Nothing ain't water. Let's go fly. After the pre-flight routine, I walked around the plane. I tend to do a walk around and you pay real close attention to detail looking for any sort of anomalies that might change your go, no-go decision. I didn't see anything out of the ordinary, so I decided it was uh, good to fly. He didn't realize it, but Brian missed a crucial step before taking flight. The pilot forgot to put fuel in the tanks critical misstep that will lead to problems later in flight. He doesn't know it, but he's set himself on the path to becoming an aviation statistic. So while I was flying, I had this really strange feeling like I'd forgotten something, like I'd left a curling iron on or something, but that's ridiculous. Look how short my hair is. I'm like, I don't even, why would I ever curl? It's naturally curly if I grow it out. But that's not what, at my age, why would I do that? That's just, no. Without much fuel in the tanks, the engine began to lose power. Why is this plane going so slow? So there I was flying along and suddenly I saw a master caution flashing at me. When I looked down at that light flashing at me, I, I just froze. I scanned the panel really quickly and I found out right away that the fuel server was running very low on resources. Time was now running out and the pilot has a full-on emergency in his hands. I was either out or really close to running out of fuel and, you know, try as I might, nothing I could think of seemed like it was going to generate more fuel for the aircraft. I knew now I was headed for a disaster. So I did what anybody would do. I declared an emergency. And I remember ATC asked me how many souls were on board. I believe in God, so I said I have, there's one soul on board. But I also believe in ghosts. So that number could be way higher. There's really no way of knowing. How could I possibly know that information? I did one thing that actually worked briefly. I banked really hard, um, hoping that any fuel that might be stuck to the far edge of the fuel tank might fall off and get um, pulled into whatever it is that sucks the fuel uh, to the engine, and, and then I would be able to uh, finish my flight. For a brief moment, the engine roared back to life. Ah, uh, much better. All right, good. Just as quickly as the engine came to life, it died again. I remember getting mad and just thinking, this is total crap. I've got places to be. I'm not the kind of person who has time for emergencies. In his frustration, Brian began to panic and flail his arms and legs around like a scared child. This is a fairly common reaction when things don't go a pilot's way. Starting to panic, I began to flip switches and knobs and dials and hoping that one of them might be an onboard fuel generator, but apparently this plane doesn't come with one and I've written a letter to the manufacturer just because I don't think that's fair. Our pilot is now having a full-on panic attack in the sky. In his panicked state, he inadvertently hits the tank selector switch. Most aircraft have multiple fuel tanks. 
Having switched to a tank that was full of fuel, the engine once again came back to life. He has enough fuel in the second tank to get to a nearby airport and land safely. I decided to finish my flight. Um, I had two hours to get where I was going and I think I'd proven that I was able to solve this sort of emergency should it come up again. So I'm 100% confident in my abilities and skills as a pilot to, uh, to finish the trip safely. So uh, yeah, they call that uh, good decision aeronautics making. And that's me when they talk about that, D decisions, good. With the engine producing power again, the pilot avoided almost certain disaster for at least another 15 minutes. Um, so do I consider myself a skilled pilot or think I'm better than other pilots because I'm able to handle these sorts of emergencies? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like a bell curve, right? So you have skilled pilots and unskilled pilots. And I like to think that I'm, whichever is the best part of the curve to be on, I like to think that I'm in there. Like, you know, they say someone's raised the bar. I, I think every time I get in the plane, I raise the bar. That's, that's how I feel. Um, that's the reason I make these videos. I want uh, people to be able to learn from me and become safer, more proficient pilots, not safer and more proficient than me. Um, I want them to be just a little bit uh, less safe and proficient than me. That way I can keep uh, instructing and uh, not legally. It's, I, want, I want people to be, be better than they are, but just a little less better than me. Thank you for watching um, and becoming a better pilot by watching. Um, it would be in your best interest as a pilot to subscribe <clears throat> and to like or to not like and leave a snarky comment. That Either one of those things would be great. Click the things, write some comments, um, entertain yourselves down below. I got a bunch more in the hopper and uh, it's fairly late at night right now. I only sleep like six hours a night. I have all this just time. Uh, and rather than try to solve the world's problems, I just try to make you guys uh, better, safer, smarter pilots. Fly safe. Looking for any anomalies that might change my no, go, no, go, go, no, no, go, go, no, go, no, YOLO, Froyo.